I have something in common with these people. Alexander Graham Bell, Richard Branson, Einstein, Nigel Kennedy. There's many more on the phone here, but because I have dyslexia, I can't read you all the names. Usually when you hear the word dyslexia, what do you think of? Reading and writing disabilities? Children who can't do maths properly? Or maybe children that spell words backwards? Well, there is a positive side to dys dyslexia. For me, it was the fact that when I left school, uh, I realised I weren't stupid because the educational system made me feel that way. I just look at things differently to other people, and I see things in different ways that other people don't even notice. I actually left school at 14 years of age, and I had a few limitations. No one would give me a job. Because I was dyslexic, I found a way to overcome that obstacle. So what did I do? I went and knocked on people's doors and told them that I had a lawn mowing business and that would they be interested in hiring me to mow their lawns? And they said, how much do you charge? And I was $10 an hour. They said, that's a great rate. I said, fine, have you got a lawn mower? <laughs> so I learnt quickly, I built up a lawn mowing business. Then I realised that I could actually sell other services to the same clientele. So I'd be sweeping drives, digging gardens, cleaning spoutings. I had a whole array of things I could do. So I had limitations once again. I realised there's only 40 hours in, in a week. And when it was raining and it was cold and it was winter time, life wasn't much fun. So I conformed and I got myself a job. It was a very heavy, heavy sledgehammer and I was bashing walls with a demolition company. And I did that for three days at $5 an hour. Then I had a unique opportunity to become a painter and a decorator, and a family friend offered me an apprenticeship. There was my break. I worked for seven years for a boss, and then a friend of mine suggested that I went into partnership with him, and we started up our own painting and decorating business. I was doomed to be a painter and a decorator. I had pride in my work, and I was really good at it. I was specialising in interior techniques, and I was at the top of the game as a painter and a decorator. So when I got to the age of 23, I thought, I'm, I've got enough money now. I was only working three and a half days a week. I'm going to go back and get educated. So I went to Spelt, Canterbury, and got tested. And I had a reading level of a nine-year-old and a spelling of the same level. So I said, well, what can I do about it? And they said, well, you could hire a teacher. So I hired a teacher for a year. Two times a week I'd go along and learn how to read and write, learn the English language. And after a year of education, I was no better off. Dyslexic people find it hard retaining information. That's why I have this God-given iPhone attached to my hand all the time. Gadgets and technology has simply changed the way I learn and communicate with people. This is, to me, like a wheelchair, and I can communicate with anybody. I started up um, a travel business. I used to hitchhike around New Zealand using the same strategies as I did with my lawn mowing business. I used to tell people that I was a mobile internet consultant, and they would hire me. And they'd say, oh, what do you do? And i say, well, I build websites on the road. I charge you $30 a month to have these websites and $300 to set them up. And I built up a business from doing that in a clientele. I have a reading level of a nine-year-old. I've published 2,000 blogs on my website, and I've used them to promote my clients. My best year ever, I turned over just short of half a million dollars with these dyslexic fingers. So you can do anything, but you can't do anything if you don't overcome obstacles that are put in front of you. So when I talk, I'm trying to inspire people to think different use technology to overcome obstacles, and enjoy what they do. That's basically my story today.